Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Gatsby. We are on episode number 5 today. As always, I am Shane Thomas. Make sure you are following me on Twitter at smthomas3. Make sure you go to codekarate.com, check out the newsletter, and if you have any questions about this episode or any of the past episodes, uh, you can, if you subscribe to the newsletter, you'll get my email address. Otherwise, uh, go to the comments in YouTube and I'll try to answer all the questions I can. Today we're going to be talking about the Gatsby image component and some of the image processing plugins built into Gatsby. What this is going to allow you to do is handle some of those complex situations where you need images of different sizes, you know, different resolutions, and if you've ever wanted to make your images responsive, you know that there's a lot of different little things you have to do to make a website work. Gatsby handles all that for you. It'll crop the images or chop up the images into different sizes based on screen size, so it's not so it's more efficiently loading the right image for the right screen dimensions. It does some cool things like the blur up effect where it loads an image in kind of a, a lower resolution blurred. And then as it finishes loading in the background, it replaces it with the, with the actual resolution image. So the first thing you're going to want to make sure you have, and if you're using the Gatsby starter, it should already be on, but you need Gatsby source file system. Gatsby Transformer Sharp and the Gatsby Plugin Sharp. So you need those plugins. You'll have to install them with NPM if you don't have them, but if you're using the Gatsby starter, it, it'll come with it. This Gatsby source file system has an images directory. So that is right here. And you can see there's two images in here. These are two images we'll use today, but you can add other images, of course but you want to make sure that that's configured correctly as well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a page that has these two images on it. And we're going to do a few things with uh, the Gatsby image component so you can see how it can work. Let's go under here in our source pages folder and let's create a gallery.js. And this is just going to be a page component. So as always, we'll import React from React, we're going to import prop types from prop types so we can validate our props. We'll import GraphQL from Gatsby, and we're going to import our image component from Gatsby-image. On top of that, we'll import our layout from our layout component and I need to learn how to spell and then we'll import our SEO and this is just for those meta tags. So if you've seen past episodes you'll know that this stuff's pretty common. Um, if you don't you can check back and see how, how those are used in past episodes. The next thing we're going to do is actually create our component or our actual uh, react component. So let's go ahead and call it gallery. And we're going to receive some data in a prop and we're going to wrap everything in a layout. And we're going to use just our title meta tag, call it image gallery and we'll create an H1 call it image gallery and we're going to put some more here but that's it for now let's validate our props and we're just going to make sure that this is this is going to receive a data prop it's just going to be an object and we want it to be re required so it's prop types dot object because we want it to be an object we want it to be required and that's all we should need there. At the bottom here, I'm going to make sure I export my component. I have a tendency to forget that for some reason. And then now we want to actually write GraphQL. And you might be wondering, well, why are we going to write GraphQL just to get an image? Well, what this allows you to do is it allows you to use uh, the, those Sharp plugins to do different transformations on these images. So you can say, I want it to be a fluid image that will 
expand or contract with the size of the page. Or maybe you know it's you know an icon or something smaller and you want it to be a fixed or set image, you can specify that as well. So by using GraphQL, it gives you the power to be able to use those different uh, transformer or use that sharp transformer to get those sizes that you want. So we're going to create this a query. So we're going to have to export it. We can just call it query. And then we'll create our template literal string here. Let's go ahead and open up the graphical editor here. So you want to make sure your Gatsby development server is running. And we're going to go ahead and open this up. And let's go ahead and clear all this out. Now what we want to do is we want to actually create this query so it's going to pull data from the file system. You can actually see you could pull it here from all files. But let's go ahead and rather than pull all files, we want to pull a very specific file. So we can give it a name. I'm just going to call it Gatsby icon. Remember, we had that astronaut image and that icon image. And it's going to be a file. And we want a relative path. And this is going to be equal to Gatsby icon.png. All right, so what this is doing is this is an arbitrary name that I'm going to give it. It's usually based on the, the file name. We're saying we want it to be a relative path that's based on whatever the configuration we have in our Gatsby config, which is using that images folder. And it's going to be called Gatsby icon.png. If I head back over to our editor, you can see inside this images folder, it's Gatsby icon.png. And our config, of course, is pointing to that images directory, which is our source images. Now what we want to do inside here is we want to use child image sharp. This is what's going to allow us to do that processing. And we could either set it as a fixed or a fluid width. Let's do fixed. And you we could set it whatever width we want. We could set a height. There's a whole bunch of different options. You can check the links. Um, in the description below and it'll provide you um, some of those links to the Gatsby documentation so you can see what all the available options are. Let's go ahead and use 512. I know it's a little bit big for an icon, but it should allow us, it should work for what we need to do. And if I just run it like this, there you go, it'll fill it in. So. If you just run it with just the fixed, or you could change this to fluid if you wanted, it's going to fill in a bunch of information. Now this is just image data. It doesn't show you the image, but you can see that it's actually loading stuff. Now what Gatsby allows you to do is it allows you to use these different fragments. And the two fragments we're going to go over are the Gatsby Image Sharp Fixed and Gatsby Image Sharp Fluid. And by using those fragments, it's going to pull in the correct information in order to display a fixed or a fluid image. So we do want this. We don't need all this extra stuff. So I'm going to grab this, go back to our gallery page where you can see we're creating our GraphQL query. And I'm going to go ahead and do that and paste it in here. Looks like I need to tab that in. So it's going to look something like this, but instead of just leaving this blank, we want to use our fragment of Gatsby image sharp fixed. That should be good. And we also want to do the same thing, but instead of Gatsby icon, I'm just going to copy this. We'll do call it astronaut image in our path is going to be gatsby-astronaut.png. We're going to make sure it's still child image sharp. We're going to make it fluid. And let's go ahead and set the max width. We'll just try 800 and see how that turns out. And we want to use the fragment gatsby image sharp fluid. So it should look something like that. And that's all we need 
for this file, except for we actually have to then display these images. Can't forget about that. And all we need to do here is just use this image component, which we haven't used yet. So rather than doing an H HTML image like this with the lowercase i, we're using the Gatsby image component, and we need to pass in some props. So first we're going to pass in the fluid image. So this will be the astronaut. And it's going to be data dot, in this case, astronaut image. dot child image sharp we're just following down this path dot fluid and then we also can give it some alt text and we're going to do the same thing but this time we're going to use fixed but it's going to be the same kind of following the same path pattern here gatsby icon dot child image sharp dot fixed and then alt text, we could just do Gatsby logo, something like that. Let's save it and let's see if it blows up or if it works. So what we'll do is we'll go to the gallery page and you can see we have our two images. Now one thing to note, you notice how it kind of blurs in. That's part of what using the image component gets you, right? So it, it sets it to the right height. You don't see a lot of times in, when you're going to a page, the page will kind of jump down as the images load. You can see it set the right height and width from the beginning and it just blurs in. So there's no there's none of that jumpy page loading that you often see. The other thing is let's go ahead and take a look at this in more of a responsive way. So you can see this one you see how the the actual astronaut is resizing because it's fluid, but the actual Gatsby icon itself isn't resizing. It's set to fixed. So to, you have to use what you think works for your situation. Sometimes fixed images are what you need, but other times, most of the time, you're going to want to use a fluid image, right? Because you want it to expand or uh, you know contract based on the size. It just really depends on how you're building your site and what the specific use case is. So the last thing we want to do is if you remember, we had this articles page, if you followed along last time, and this is pulling in data from a Drupal site. So you can see this image does still uh, kind of contract and resize, but it's not using the Gatsby image component. So if I refresh, you notice how it just loads in. It doesn't have any kind of blur effect like we'd maybe expect it to. It still loads fast, still works. And there's not you're not always gonna wanna use the Gatsby image component. Most of the time you will, but there are some specific use cases where you may have to use an, a normal HTML image, uh, just image tag. But we want this to use the Gatsby image component as well. Let's go back to our code. We have this articles page here, and what we're doing is we are loading this local file public URL. All we need to do is change this to child image sharp. We're going to be fluid and let's give it a max width of let's say 600 and we then want to use our Gatsby image sharp fluid just like that and what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to load in the image just like it was before, but it's going to do this extra processing. Now for our image, we no longer want to use .public URL. We want to use local file dot child image sharp dot fluid. So that's going to pass in this fluid image into this image prop. Now we just need to go to our article preview and actually change it to use uh, the Gatsby image component. So we're going to import image from Gatsby-image. And all we need to do is replace this image tag with our fluid image and it's just going to be image. We're still going to use the same alt text. 
So it's going to look very similar here, as you can see. But we're going to get rid of this one. Now if we save it, we go here and refresh the page. You'll notice how you can see it kind of blur in. So it's going to load much more quickly. It's going to provide that nice blurred in effect. So you can see it, it loads a little more nicely and it's now using that Gatsby image component. That's it for this time on the Daily Dose of Gatsby. As always, make sure if you reach out if you have any questions, sign up for the newsletter on CodeKarate.com, leave a comment, subscribe on YouTube, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.